All right, you guys. Let's get back into this. Now, there have been some huge developments over the past 24 hours. And we're going to break down some of that today. Um, a huge, huge segment just uh, released on the Stu Peters show. And what you're going to notice when you go into the comment section on this channel is a lot of people come in and promote other channels. And oftentimes, 99% of the times, it will not heart those comments and I do that because I don't have the time to go through every single um, endorsement because if I heart that and then it goes to some weird channel or channel that I haven't investigated which I very rarely watch content on YouTube on other people's channels I just don't do it because we're kind of on our own path and I just don't have the time to watch through other people's work right and so I would hate to recommend a channel or heart a channel and in effect, when you heart it, when you heart that, when you heart a comment recommending a channel, you're basically endorsing people to go there. And then if you do that, you can steer people down the wrong path. Okay. Now understand that there is some kind of something's going on on YouTube because when I go, when I do look at other people's channels, I look at their comment sections. I almost never see our channel being recommended. But on our channel, it's like a third of the comments are basically recommending other people's channels now i'm not i don't have a problem with that but i'm not going to heart those comments i'm not going to delete people endorsing other channels but it's just interesting right you guys know what i'm talking about how often do you see enter the stars mentioned on anybody's channel not very often right so that tells me that there is some kind of bot system going on where people bots are going out and somehow these channels are paying people to drop comments in other people's comment section to promote their channel and that's fine look that's what i did to try to help this channel grow early on i tried to go into comment sections and say hey come check out my channel and so i know how that goes but i would never pay someone to do that but it seems as though that's happening to a certain degree now today is different and i want to draw a you know a line about what happened today with the Stu Peter show because I do not believe that that's that was bots this was actually a really well done documentary type of video in which a lot of the work that we had done on this channel even before the spamdemic talking about snake bites I am legend you can look right right now on this channel and you'll see our I am legend decodes before the spamdemic ever started and we were talking about the Cobra Serpent that was coming. Right? So this video that just came out yesterday, I believe, on the Stu Peter show. That I heard through chatter in our comment section. Seems to dovetail perfectly into the revelations that we were inspired to present. All the way back before the Spamdemic started. With the I Am Legend decodes. Many of you remember those decodes. The crowning of the snake and the coming zombie virus. Remember Will Smith in his Cobra Mustang pulling up under the crown? And remember how some people were like, that's dumb. That's not happening. And I was like, look, I don't make this stuff up. This is Holy Spirit inspired. He's telling me what to say. And I follow what he tells me. So I'll never give in to negative criticism on this channel. But it's interesting how everything comes full circle every single time, doesn't it? So, the Stu Peter Show. Now, I'm not going to be able to link that. I think it's a hot topic. Um, I, maybe I'll put the link. I'll try it in the Facebook group, maybe, or something. But um, it's called Don't Drink the Water or something like that. I can't remember the name of the title of it. But maybe you guys can help me in the chat here. Now, something was mentioned on that show that confirms that this is all about a snake bite. And what they mentioned on the show was this. That people who try to suck the venom out of a snake bite lose their taste and smell. I'll say it again. People who try to suck the venom out of a snake bite 
lose their taste and smell. Let's read this abstract to this study here. Snake bite is prevalent in rural areas of Asia. Although the myth of direct sucking of snake venom may be life threatening, it is commonly practiced in such areas. Case series. Two cases of cobra venom exposure to oral cavity with the development of aguasia, which is losing taste and smell, following the sucking of tissue materials from the bitten site are discussed. Taste sensations were recovered in both cases in the order of sweat, sweet, sorry, salty, sour, and bitter on day four, day five, day seven, and day nine, respectively following the exposure. Both patients received antivenom due to their Systemic manifestation, exposure of the venom in the oral cavity might have disrupted the taste transduction pathways and signaling mechanism. You guys, we've talked all about this. This was about the nervous system in something being blocked, pathways being blocked, remember? Thus resulting in aguasia, as no macroscopic changes were noticed in the oral cavity, epiglottis, or oropharynx. Taste sensation recovery in sweet, salty, sour, and bitter order without zinc supplementation suggested that the aguasia might be due to dysfunction of sensory nerve endings and or disruption of receptor cell activities rather than damage to taste buds, which takes more time to recover. Moreover, phase recovery of different types of taste indicates that aguasia is likely attributable to peripheral mechanisms rather than a part of the systemic manifestation as these two cases recovered from other neurological manifestations within 24 hours completely. Conclusion. In the absence of any other likely explanation, we consider that aguasia could be due to the effect of venom on the taste receptors. Further clinical studies are needed to evaluate the effect of snake venom on taste receptors in snake bite victims. Now, in the Stu Peters show, he actually, there he has a doctor on there, and he actually says that some of these people that were sucking the venom out of these victims didn't recover their taste and smell for an entire year. Now, I don't know what study he was referencing, but this is very interesting development nonetheless, is it not? So, unbelievable. Now, I'm not endorsing every single aspect of the segment, but the snake venom revelations were crazy. Reminds me of some scriptures in the Bible, in which in the Old Testament, the Most High caused fiery serpents, fiery copper serpents, because the word fiery also translates to the word copper. He caused them to bite them. And they had to look upon a snake on a pole to be healed. But when Jesus came, he too was raised up on a pole so that we could look upon him to be healed. So, this segment is over on Rumble, if you want to see it. And it's called Watch the Water. Watch the Water. You should be able to find it by doing that i think it's on a couple of the other sites as well so um crazy times you guys now let's get into the rest of today's show and i'm glad that everybody's starting to filter in here um wow let's get into this next segment artificial intelligence mistakes a bald head for a soccer ball. Look at this. Let me let me zoom this down here. Here you see the soccer ball come across the screen. And the artificial intelligence camera. Doesn't understand the difference between. The soccer ball and this guy's head. His bald head. Now we all know that the soccer ball resembles the acrinodrome molecule. Doesn't it? So, weird times. Artificial intelligence. This was uh, dated back in 2020. This came out. Confirming some of the work we've done. Now, 
This is creepy. Now, all of pretty much what we're presenting today came from you guys. You guys send me these links. I read through the comments and I present it back to you. And what I'm being told, there's different uh, ideas about how we should be presenting this channel. Some people are upset because I don't get to the point fast enough. And then some people are upset because I am too fast and they want me to present longer. Here's what I've found in terms of the comment, the, the consensus about all this. I'm sometimes not doing a good enough job explaining things. So maybe it's the way I'm presenting. Because I feel like 5 to 10% of the people are completely lost. And here's, here's what I can tell you about that. If you are just picking off videos here and there on the channel, you will be lost. And I try to make our shows not 2 or 4 hours long like some channels. Try to make them 30 minutes to 45 minutes, don't I? But if you miss those videos, which I usually upload one video a day. I'm not one of those channels that tries to upload two and three videos a day. But if I upload one video a day and it's 30 to 40 minutes, you really need to follow along and watch the videos. Also, I think sometimes people get distracted in the chat. And so they're really not paying full attention. So what happens is you're going to miss points. And then on the back end, in the comment section, I have to come through and help people get up to speed. But those are just some suggestions. And I think we can all meet in the middle. You guys watch all the videos. Stay caught up. And have a little bit of focus. You really have to see what's on the screen. And listen to what's happening. In order to absorb it. And I need to do a better job trying to simplify these things. Okay. And also giving you some background. When I broach new, uh, you know, a topic that we've talked about before. Give you a quick background on what we found. And then move forward with the topic. Right. Look at this. Now this is creepy because this confirms the work that we did on the Artemis cult. Remember Artemis? The ancient Roman goddess that brought disease and then cured it? And she was also about the hair, wasn't she? Her altar was found under a willow tree. By two brothers, one of which was named Alopecius, like alopecia. Well, look what one of you found. There was an Artemis character in the reboot Utopia series. Now, if you remember Utopia, it was all about this spam demic, worldwide spam demic, and it decimated the world's population. It rendered women barren. And it was some kind of, it ended up being some kind of bioweapon. And they had an uh, international smack scene day in which the entire world was smack the nation, smacksinated. And the original Utopia came out in like 2017 before the spam demic ever happened. And then the reboot came out like last year. Now, I did not watch the reboot because. It was just basically the same story being told and they scrambled some stuff around. But now I'm kicking myself because look at this character that's emerged. Artemis. Who brings disease and cures it. And look at what she's drinking. Remember, it's all about bald heads, right? Let me zoom this up for you so you can see it. Samson. Jen. Who was Samson in the Bible? He lost his strength when he lost his hair. So apparently this Artemis character was a kind of teacher. She taught um, Jessica Hyde, which is the main character, like everything she knew. And then I think at the end, Jessica has to like kill her for some reason. There's something about tattoos here and all this other stuff. We're not going to get into the rest of the plot of this, but I wanted to present that to you guys because this is confirmation this is all about baldness virus smack the nation smack scenes and everything else now let's keep going with this because here's another thing that one of you noticed several of you noticed that cathedral ceilings inside of churches look like the inside of the umbrella now we've been breaking down the anatomy of an umbrella haven't we 
and we found that an umbrella, an umbrella really is a hypodermic needle. It's a syringe. We found some artwork yesterday. They confirmed that. We're going to present that at the end of the show. So, if the ceiling of this church is an umbrella, and we know that umbrellas have feral tips, the tip is called a feral, then where would that tip be? Well, it would be the spire of the church, wouldn't it? Poking out through the top. Now, guess who is behind most of the polio smack the nation campaigns throughout history? It would have been the Catholic Church, wasn't it? There's actually images of popes giving the polio smack scene to children. Churches are basically laid out like syringes. Syringes standing in the holy place of the cross, replacing Jesus. What am I talking about? Well, not only is there a cross here, the bottom, but churches are laid out like crosses, aren't they? They have a main hall with two side areas that look like a cross from the sky. So here you have the progression of symbolism from faith in Jesus to umbrellas and smack scenes. Now look at this graphic I put together. This is crazy. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to level t layer 2 here. And I'm going to bring in the umbrella, which looks a lot like the ceiling of this church. So there's your umbrella. Now I'm going to go to layer 3. And I'm going to, well, I'm going to turn layer 2 off. And now I'm going to show you the syringe. Standing in the holy place. Remember, the pharaoh is the part of the syringe, isn't it? Matching the pharaoh of the umbrella, which also has a pharaoh at its tip. Yeah, there's something going on here, isn't there? Now, here's where things go off the chains and get a little bit troubling. But there is no need for fear. The needle of the uh, syringe and umbrella connotates something that receives something, doesn't it? The needle is like a signal. It's like an antenna. And this is where Jive G comes in. Remember the bald monks that would cruise around in some of these churches? Hmm. The baldness again. Monks hang out in churches. And temples, don't they? And I'm starting to wonder if all of this has something to do with a signal. A spire. Now, there are conflicting studies about EMF frequencies. Let's go back here. Some of these studies say that EMFs can actually make your hair grow. But then there are these other studies that say that EMFs can make you bald. Let's read the abstracts on these studies. <clears throat> it says here, Extremely low frequency EMFs increase in expression of antigen-related molecules in human dermal papil papilla, papilla sorry, cells. Kind of sounds like papacy, doesn't it? Despite several advances in chemical treatments, the proportion of population suffering from alopecia is increasing thereby creating a need for new treatments to control hair loss and preventing balding. Human hair follicle, dermal papilla cells, type of specialized fibroblast in the hair bulb, play an essential role in controlling hair growth and in conditions like androgenic alopecia. The study aimed to evaluate the intense, intensity-dependent effect of extremely low-frequency electromagnetic fields on the expression of antigen-related molecules in vitro. We examine the effect of ELF-EMF, to determine whether activation 
of the signaling pathways improved activation and proliferation. Various PEMF intensities significantly increased the expression of antigen related molecules. In particular, intensity of 10G is most potent for promoting the proliferation and expression of antigen related molecules. Our results confirm that EMF enhance activation and proliferation, suggesting a potential treatment strategy for alopecia. Think of the odds. There's a link between EMFs and baldness. In this case, saying that they can treat it. But let's look at this other study, these other two studies. This one was published in 2016. And this says that EMFs can cause hair loss. Let's read this one here. Mobile phone usage in nearly 90% of the world's population. Harmful, harmful effects of EMG have been concerned for regulation. There's a safe, cell, uh, safe specific absorption rate. Oh, look at this. What? They call it a SAR? Kind of like SARS? Very interesting. Let's keep reading here. Defined for thermal effects, but EMG has not has non-thermal effects as well. EMG can affect genes, neural tissues, endocrine regulation, and sperms. Research workers have pointed out the mechanism of EMG radiation to be acting through DNA breakage. Formation of reactive oxygen species. We are reporting a case of hair loss over the temporal region from repeated prolonged conversations on mobile phones. Biopsy is negative for any other pathology of hair loss. Use of antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals can aid in recovery of the damaged cells. Low dose 2% minoxidil application combined with nutritional therapy. Limiting the duration of mobile phone usage and hands-free was helped help to regrow the hair. Now I think this is the same study here. It's the same study. Uh, yeah, this is the same study. This just goes into more detail. Of course, I'll link all this. But interesting that there's conflicting studies, right? Now, I'm not saying either study the either of these studies is right or wrong. For anybody reviewing this video, I'm simply presenting what's published internet um, studies done, peer-reviewed, and all these things. So I'm not making any claims on this video. Now, this raises questions, doesn't it? Because it makes you wonder, as this fact check article says, does Jive G link to Ovico 19? Well, of course, the checkers say no, don't they? But let me show you something, because this check article published on 2020 in April, and this particular study was done after the check article. And of course, is not addressed in the check article. Look at this. This is 2021. Evidence for a connection between Vidco and exposure to EMFs, including Jive G. Now, again, I'm not saying the study is correct. I'm simply presenting to you what's out there published in our research to get down to the bottom of some of this stuff. Let's read this. Vidco. Let's focus on the severe, acute, blah, 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 the SARS, which again, that's the measurement of the safe levels of EMF. It's called a SAR. Weird. This, you guys, we're in the matrix right now. This is crazy. Let's keep reading here. Let's go down to the bottom here and get to the bottom of this because it's giving the whole history of everything. In this study, we examined the peer-reviewed scientific literature on the detrimental mental bioeffects of WCR and identified several mechanisms by which WCR may have contributed to VIDCO as a toxic environmental cofactor. By crossing boundaries between the disciplines of biophysics and pathophysiology, we present evidence that WCR may cause morphologic changes in erythrocytes, including echinocytes and ro rolu formation that can contribute to hypercoagulation so basically all these things okay which is a lot of people have been saying some of this stuff for years
So again, I'll link that study for you as well. So let's get back to this antenna thing because there may be something to this. A particular antenna needle spire comes to mind and it probably comes to mind for you as well the one trade freedom tower a tower that has been emitting a strange frequency before it was even done being built let's play this and listen Now this was before it was even done being built. Now there's another one here I want to play for you. It's probably a little bit louder. You can hear it a little bit better. Let's fix this up here for you guys. By calling it unmistakable and very chilling. So here it is and you can judge for yourself. Well, that was from last week. Now we have footage from last year shot by a woman named Jenna Pope. You'll see a police car with its lights on, but the noise you hear is not a police siren. And it's pretty cool, right? I mean, well, it's, it's very eerie. It you know, is. And people are, of course, not cool at all. Now, who was the architect behind this? Well, his name is David Magi. David Magi Childs. Here he is right here. David Magi Child. And he was born on April Fools. And of course, he is bald. How tall is this tower? The Spire? Born on April 4th, or 1st. And the Spire is... Where'd it go? 411 feet. And 4 inches tall. So he's born on 4-1. And look at all the four and ones in the uh, spire mast. Do you think there's a connection here? Of course there is. Now, in fact, this spire has been called a needle. Spire permanently installed on the tower. And here you say, see it says the needle will be held in place by a temporary structure now here's the interesting thing about all this because the total height is 888 feet plus 888 feet for a total of 1776 feet the two eight the two single towers represent eight each they were beveled edges with eight sides and the two were combined into one to make the 888 plus 888 the 1776 you guys this is a spiritual battle this 1776 feet came in underneath the needle did it not Now, this brings us to another needle that we uploaded yesterday in a short video. Now, if you guys have any questions about all this or any of this is confusing, just go into the chat and ask questions. I don't want anybody to feel confused on this channel because this stuff is actually pretty simple and pretty straightforward.
it doesn't make sense if you want if people are naysayers or want to deny everything but if you're following along every all the puzzle pieces fit together now what are we talking about here well one of you was on the streets of New York and noticed this very creepy artwork that appeared inside a bus stop enclosure in New York City. And I want to take a closer look at the symbolism in this piece. A lot of this is symbolism that you guys left me in the comments section. Because this artwork shows a hypodermic needle and an umbrella together. Wow. Now, for some reason, the quality on this is just not very good. We're going to do the best we can. Now, what we're going to cover next is some of the symbolism that you guys found. You know, in yesterday's show, I talked about this frog-like creature. And I thought that this looked like a tongue. But many of you said, no, Casey. That's not a tongue. That's a hydra. And I was like, wait, what? It could be, couldn't it? Look at this. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's got seven legs. One short of what a hydra would have, which is eight. Now, somebody else noticed that down here, it appears as though Whatever is in this needle is birthing in something. They're being born out of the bottom of this. Right? Now the people down here at the bottom that are being born are wearing masks. Now that's the interpretation of the artist, not me. That they're masked and Others of you noticed that the one-eyed symbolism, beginning with this very serpentine-like God hovering over the world, who, by the way, is not wearing a mask, is he? The controllers don't have to wear their masks. Now here's something I'm noticing, too, that this area here almost looks like um, metallic, doesn't it? Looks like a graph. Graph of the Een, doesn't it? To me it does, especially when you zoom out. It's got that quality to it. So, we have this serpentine-like god hovering over the world. Above him, a hydra, the sun god Apollo. Now, it's interesting because this artist, actually, they actually broke this down a little bit further. And he believes... Or he made this to basically depict the world and trying to deal with VidCo19 and, and the different uh, viewpoints about it. So he knows exactly what's going on. Remember, the feral tip of the needle is the same as the feral tip of the umbrella. They're both named the same thing. So, so I wanted to give that additional context to what's going on here. The artist actually says that this was drawn under the inspiration of some kind of a belief system in the Indian religion about the whole world, that we are all one in the world. And guess what? That's exactly what's going to happen. It's because it's the hive mind, isn't it? So a lot to this and... I should have spent more time on it yesterday, but people have been asking for more Cliff Notes versions of some of the stuff. To me, this stuff is so important. I mean, I even watch my own videos sometimes because I even find more stuff after I present. And so I, I don't know why people wouldn't have the time. This stuff is the most important stuff right now on the Internet, you guys, because we're actually breaking all of this down on the cutting edge before it's even happening time after time after time. So I don't know why people wouldn't take the 40 minutes a day to try to understand this stuff. But please be patient because, you know, there's, there's a lot of pressure to presenting this stuff because I want to get it right. Because the, the most high is depending on me to try to present this so that people understand so they don't keep walking into the trap. So I take this 
very, very seriously. This is why I don't mess around on my decodes. They're very thorough. Um, there is no just generalizations. This is deep, deep research pre and presenting every single day. So hang in there. Things are going to get better. Now, tomorrow, we're going to go into, get into some confusion surrounding Jesus being called the morning star. And also the devil being called the morning star. So, here's a blogger. For some reason, when you type in my name, he comes up. That, that never, ever happens with blogs unless you're an insider. And his name is The Traveler, which, of course, is code for Masonic people, which love to divide the church, don't they? So, he's called me a false teacher. We're going to break this down. He offers some proof. I offer mine down here in the reply section. I have to refresh this. And told him that I'm going to be covering his blog. And so, and I told him, why are you trying to divide the church? And he's obviously upset. So, I'm going to show the proof that I have in the translation of some key verses that is lost in translation, believe it or not. And I'm going to provide all that tomorrow. Now, why did I ever do a video on Jesus being the morning star and Lucifer, Lucifer being the morning star? Well, it's because it's an inconvenient truth that Christianity has not dealt with correctly in debunking atheists and people who believe against Christianity. And even other religions, believe it or not. And they've left this hole wide open for people to come in and try to discredit Jesus. They say, oh, well, Jesus is Lucifer. He's the devil. Don't you see it? This is what we've been told. And when has a pastor properly addressed this and debunked it? They almost never do. So, we did a video years ago debunking it. And we'll get into the details of that because Jesus is the morning star. And I'll, this, let me give you the 30,000 foot view. Because Jesus is the morning star and Lucifer is a morning star. Job says there were many morning stars that used to sing together in heaven, which connotates unity before the fall of Lucifer. So it's pretty simple. And so that's what I'm going to present tomorrow. I'm going to show you concordances. I'm going to show you, you know, the actual word translation. Okay, because it's pretty simple when you go back and look at the concordance and see how the word was supposed to be translated versus the word that we were given. And this is where you get into the King James Version all in infallible it's never wrong crowd because there this is one such i'm not going to call it a mistake but it clouds the waters and and if you look deeper into the actual root word it explains it to you lucifer actually means morning star it doesn't mean just bright and shining it actually means morning star so we'll cover all that tomorrow i want to give it the time that the time is due i just want to give you a little bit of a heads up in summary, so people don't freak out. Casey just called Jesus Lucifer. No, I didn't. He's not the Lucifer, the devil. He's different. So, this is what we do on this channel. We help arm people with knowledge to combat the naysayers of the Bible. Because people try to say, oh, there's contradictions in the Bible. No, there are not. There are misinterpretations. Once you hash it all out, you realize there is no contradiction. And so, unfortunately, our church has not given us the tools to do this in many cases regarding many things. Why do you think that is? Well, it's because the church still has one foot in the world, don't they? They're still celebrating pagan holidays. They're still, uh, you know, beholden to governments and telling their people do what the government says, aren't they? Which is against what Jesus said. Jesus said the opposite of all that. 
And so they still send their kids to Disneyland and still watch Disney, you know, the whole thing. So they've got one foot in the world, don't they? So, of course, they're not going to have the tools to debunk some of this stuff because they're not led by the Holy Spirit. But here's what happens. When you believe and you have true faith and you know that the, the Bible is infallible, then you look for the explanation. And you find it because God reveals it to you. He says, okay, my wise and faithful servant, because you believed in me and didn't just think that I was this or that, I'm going to show you the truth. We've done the same exact thing with other subjects in the Bible, such as animal sacrifice. Another thing that the main big box Christian church doesn't know how to properly address with the Satanists and naysayers. They have no answer for them. But through our research, we've shown an answer, haven't we? That that was a specific covenant with a group of people. A set of laws for them specifically because they had a very important mission. Which was to protect the bloodline of Christ so he could be born and save the world. And so, this animal sacrifice thing... God created the animals, right? But sin entered the world. And we have to eat animals anyway to survive. And so there's the explanation. The sacrifice was done to atone for sin, wasn't it? And we even made the case in some of our research that they have these pots. So the connotation was is that a lot of this stuff was just eaten afterwards. So in effect, they were basically saying a prayer, asking for forgiveness of sins, praying before their meal and eating it. Now, that wasn't in every single case, but many cases it was. They had these hooks that they used to pull out the animals out of these pots. You can look all this up in the Old Testament. And this is why the enemy does a dark side version of all this, doesn't he? This is why he shows people hanging from hooks to make it look gruesome, to make you doubt the Most High. In the things that happened in the Old Testament. And there's probably 10 or 15 other things that we've covered on the channel to try to explain to people who are very fearful of the Old Testament God that there were reasons for everything and not to be afraid. And then when Jesus came, he offered salvation, and a lot of things did change because it's a different covenant. Our covenant under Christ is completely different than the covenant that the Israelites had to follow. And there's your explanation right there. Now, I, there's a lot more to it, but those are the highlights and Cliff Notes version of all of that. Now, let me go into the chat here, see what you guys are talking about. There's an umbrella store in London called Artemis. Oh, my goodness, Tanker. All right, we're going to have to look into that. Now, someone else had sent me something while we're here. Might as well cover this as well on, on the subject. V-roll. Oh, it sounds a little bit like virus, doesn't it? Also means feral. The word is the same. French V-roll is the feral. Remember, this is the tip of the umbrella. It almost has the same word as V-I-R-U-S. More confirmation. Somebody sent that to me just this morning. Let me put it back here so I'll remember to link it for you guys unbelievable now in this case it's a ring around a bugle or hunting horn one ring to rule them all this is the ring this is the corona the coronal ring of the sun this is why they worship the sun it's a it was about this all the time from the beginning from the beginning wow and look at this anagrams so when you scramble the word oliver which means olive so this directly opposes the pure seed the olive seed the olive oil seed of the son of god notice the opposition between the two there's always opposition and enmity between the two seeds isn't there i'm getting chills right now wow so, 
Everything we covered was from you guys. You guys are the ones that are amazing. I'm simply here to present it back to you with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Whew, man, blown away right now. All right, let's go back into the chat here. Coronal mass ejections are the key. Now, yeah, some of you have shared some theories about that. And you believe that this could come from a coronal mass ejection from the sun. I, I, my personal belief is that will be the cover story as to why everybody loses their hair and all this. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's right happening right here um, around us through their biological you know weapons that's what i think is going to happen but i could be wrong i don't know but um those are just my gut feelings about that okay april 18th the, the mandates were li lifted saturn has a hexagram at the north pole um somebody asked if t uh, tom was ever coming back yabba dabba no i posted a community post i hate to keep bringing this up over and over again because I've explained it several times. Um, but maybe I should just say it publicly for those that are keep asking about Tom. I'm not mad at Tom anymore. Um, I forgive him. But uh, Tom wanted me to pay him $2,000 a month to moderate this channel. And look, in the beginning he asked, he said, look, I'm not going to be able to moderate the channel anymore because I've got to go and provide for my family. I go, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Look, I'm not asking you, forcing you to be here. You know, we appreciate you. A lot of people love you on this channel. But, um, you know, this life's not that serious for you to have to moderate on my channel. You know, go and, you know, provide for your family. Well, then later, um, I hate to even talk about this. I don't want to, but people keep asking because and that causes rumors and it causes gossip and all that stuff. So I'm setting the record straight. Now, Tom won't deny any of this because I have the email that he sent me asking me for $2,000 a month to moderate the channel. So I said, look, go provide for your family. I go, but if you want, we can try this. I go, why don't you put a fundraiser link in the chat and maybe you can... Uh, you know, have some money. People will donate because obviously a lot of people love you and your what you do is valuable to a lot of people. So put a link in the chat. So he did that for like three days. He told me he got like 50 bucks a week doing that. Look, you guys, I've been on YouTube 10 years. Uh, I didn't even put a donation link until the last like two years maybe out of the 10. Even when I was dead broke in France making $350 a month on YouTube, I did not put a donation link up. And I was there for a year and a half. So for someone to come on and get $50 a week, look, that might not support your family, but geez, that's pretty good. And had he hung in there for longer than three days, he would have made probably his $2,000 a month that he wanted over the course of maybe a year of being on here and serving the body of Christ, right? So I was a little shocked when he asked me for money, but that's really not what shocked me when he asked me for the two grand a month. What really shocked me was that he kind of, well, he didn't kind of, he actually told me that he went on some site and saw that I was making $12,000 a month, which of course is completely false, not even anywhere close to that, but it was almost as if he showed me that to try to guilt trip me into paying him $2,000 a month. And he had this whole plan about me writing this off of my taxes. For anyone that wants to see the email, just email me and I'll send it to you. I'm not making any of this up. So that's not even what got me because I was cool until then. I'm like, okay, well, Tom, that's incorrect information. Here's what got me. I started asking around and at least one of you came forward and said, Tom sent me that same information. So he's been sending this information to people. I don't know how many, but at least one. Behind my back. Telling people, Casey's making all this money. And he needs, and, and why wouldn't he just kick down two grand a month to keep me on the channel because everybody loves me. 
That's what happened. So I'm going to let it go at that. I hate talking about this stuff, but so many people liked Tom, and I like Tom too. He did a lot for this channel. He shared the gospel, but at the end of the day, come on. I shouldn't have to be dealing with this, you guys. And this is why we don't have a moderator anymore. This is why I pulled all the wrenches, because this three times is a charm, right? We've been through this drama three times now. First with Paul Panda, then my best friend Mark from from England coming on here and causing harm and discord. And then Tom. So no more moderators. You guys can all just go to the right here and you can moderate your own people. If, some, if you don't like what someone's saying, just block them. Case closed. All right, what else we got going on here? How long did I spend on that? Five minutes? Whew. Man, to come up for air here. Yeah, time to let it go. Exactly. But you notice every time we come on here, everyone says, I miss Tom. I miss Tom. Where's Tom? Where's Tom? I'm like, come on, you guys. You got to check the community tab. I already addressed this two weeks ago. And it was April 1st was his last day. Hmm. You know, I hate to be, I am a, a conspiracy person, right? But sometimes you wonder, you wonder if some of these things weren't orchestrated from the very beginning. And this is where we have to get into protecting this channel. Okay. We have to protect this channel. Now there's another aspect to this. Somebody was whispering in Tom's ear, a person that you guys all know who I've since blocked, who comes into this chat, that leave really nice comments about me. Oh, bless you, Casey. You're such a great person. Um, whoa, great decode. Um, they come on here and, you know, they're in the chat. You guys have seen her. And guess what she was doing? Whispering in Tom's ear about some drama that happened way back in 2013. About some rape allegations against me. Not allegations, but accusations. Digging up stuff from the past, whispering in Tom's ear, being two-faced, and then coming here into the chat and pretending. So, this is what I've been dealing with, you guys. Now, for those of you that want to know about that, again, email me and I will send you emails exonerating me from these accusations, which I believe, look, let's just put it all out there. Okay, let's just put it all out there. Because... Here's what happens. People start chattering. And if I don't talk about this, then what happens is people just gossip. And then the gossipers win, right? Because they chip away at the integrity of this channel. So way back in 2013, a year after my channel started, I was became attracted to this person who had her own YouTube channel. Her channel was actually bigger than mine at the time. So... I fell for a pretty face. Invited her out. At the time I was living on the Central Coast. This was, you guys, this was almost 10 years ago. I had just started my channel the year before. And all of a sudden, all these strange people were giving me attention. People with much larger channels. Latching on to mine. Um, I'm not going to name names because you really can't do that on YouTube anymore. But let's just, let's just put it this way. This is why I don't hook up with channels anymore. Because it almost is always some kind of psyop. It's just crazy. So she came out and I fell for it and I fell into sin. I did. But then she left and we continued to email for months. We even had plans to get back together and try to have some kind of relationship. In the email, she tells me this was the best trip of her life. Everything was good, right? Until I find out that she's behind my back telling people that I raped her. Sounds like a psyop, doesn't it? And then what happened? Now, again, I have the emails from this woman saying she had the best trip of her life. Okay, so that exonerates me right there because who does that? You don't tell someone that was the best trip of your life and then go behind their back and say that he raped me. Okay, you don't do that. Because it doesn't make any sense. He's immediately discredited. Then I go on to Dutch Sense's chat. And he's telling all his people in his chat. That Casey raped his friend. Which was this girl. Now here's the cringy thing. He was going to bat for this girl. Who was he was friends with long before. 
she came to see me and before I even knew her, they were in this little group. There's a whole group over there, just so you guys know. And they kind of deny Christ. They don't talk about God ever. And basically, they, they hate channels like ours. Now, for those of you that remember, Dutch Sense came to the channel. Was, he used to comment on our channel often in the early days. Again, very weird, right? Why would he be commenting and giving time and attention to a channel of my size at the time, which was probably 10,000 subscribers? When he had half a million subscribers. Now I know a lot of you follow Dutch Sense. But understand there's something not right with him. Why would he put his reputation on the line. To accuse someone who he knew had proof. That his little friend was lying. Now he was married at the time. And for some reason he thought that he wanted to be the white knight. For this very attractive woman. And was putting his reputation on the line. That is very very cringy. Right? Yes, it is. So, um, I'm just putting all this out there because the rumors are going. And obviously, there's people even on this channel who are pretending to be nice that are still continuing to spread these rumors. So, I challenged Dutch in his own chat. And I said, dude, are you really going to do this right now? You Do you understand I have proof, right? And he, he did not back down. So, that told me something. That told me something. That there is something deeper here. Someone's telling him to do this. Because otherwise he'd be like, okay, show me the proof. And then why would have showed it to him and he would be like, yeah, that's a little bit weird. Who says that? Who continues to email you more multiple times and con continues to talk to you years and years later even? If that was the case. And so that's what is going on. So all this has come back full circle. And what is... The overarching theme, look, we all make mistakes. I just admitted to you a mistake that I made. I'm not hiding from that. It happens. You get attracted to someone, you start talking about a relationship that you're going to have. You know, you want love in your life. And sometimes you give in to do things that you're not really supposed to be doing. But the last thing you'd expect is for a part of the community who really, this isn't about me, is it? It's about God, isn't it? It's about faith. It's about the love on this channel. It's about destroying something good and the connections that we have and is, have established over the years that they're jealous of. And so, I'm not sure how much past it it goes, but it appears to me is that there's some either spiritual component or there could be a government agency sending out these honey traps to stumble YouTubers, especially Christian men. This is why we have the rules we do on this channel. This is why I don't put up with any nonsense. Because I've been drawn into these traps. And so this is why we have to set the record straight. Now let's go into the chat here. So I shouldn't even spend that much time on that. But I wanted to give you guys the 911 on that. Now many of you who were from that era who were on the channel probably heard some of these rumors. And you've heard me address them. I have actually addressed this publicly before. I've never really said it in a show before. But I've sent out emails. I've talked to people. And again, here's the offer. I'm going to put my email right here. Now, here's what I ask you to do. Because. I want you to consider. Once you see the proof that I send you. You need to unsubscribe from Dutch Sense. For slandering channels like mine because he's not only slandering me he's slandering everything that we stand for on this channel and so i will show you the proof and who he backed and who he slandered me for and then you will need to make a decision and choice that's all i ask because if i'm going to take the time to send out 100 emails which i've already sent out hundreds of emails on this a couple years ago then you need to do your part and do what you need to do and that's all I ask from you. All right. Let's get back to our father's business. All right. See what you guys are up to. Careful of what? Awake in the light. There's nothing for me to be afraid of. I'm simply addressing lies of the enemy. So, yes, Honey Trap comes to mind. And there is a lot of that going on here on YouTube. A lot of it, you guys. 
a lot of it. So you have to be careful. All Christian men need to be careful. All of us do. All right. Now. Let's see. I'm trying to read through your comments here. I've seen people go into his chat talking about God and being blocked for talking about God. He am saying this isn't the format for that. Who does that? Who does that? And this is where you need to choose and make a choice about what it is that you are going to stand for. You can't have feet in both sides. I've heard people say, well, I like that channel. Um, they, I don't agree with everything they say, but, you know. Um, they have a lot of good stuff. Or I like to follow that channel because they're good at the weather. Be careful who you get behind. If they're rejecting God on their channel and saying you can't talk about that over here, uh, run the other way. I don't care how good their stuff is. I don't care how good it is. So, see, some of you were blocked for quoting scripture. There you go right there. It's not just me making stuff up. I don't make anything up. I tell you guys the truth. So... I'm going to go ahead and end the show there. Um, again, email me if you're confused or you're upset. And I will give you the proof you need to deal and process with all this. But you need to start taking steps to make a choice and not stand on the fence anymore. Because there is a battle raging. Obviously, our channel has grown over the years very, very slowly. We've come under intense attack for being on YouTube for 10 years there's no way our channel should be this small, but it is. And I've had to eat my humble pie over all these years, serving the Lord, trying not to focus on the fact that our word isn't getting out to the people that it needs to get to. Then you got backbiters, backstabbers. It's just an intense attack. Now, I hate to sit here and it, I, I know this for some people, this is coming across as whining and complaining, but you need to know the spiritual battle that's happening. You need to know, because if you don't know, then you're going to be you're going to be lost you're going to be deceived by these people at some point maybe not now but at some point you are going to be deceived because they're trying to pretend like they love god but then they don't and you can tell that look let me give you an example redeemed by a blessed sister right I've had people complain to me because she posts too many scriptures. I'm like, what is too many scriptures? What does that even mean? How can you, how is a person even able to post too many scriptures? We all need to see as much of the word as possible. Right? I've even asked her. I go, look, can you post scriptures that relate to what we're talking about so people see the correlation between what's being presented and what's in the Bible? Do you see now the problem? Do you see the problem with people who love God and people who don't? I'll never ask her to quit posting scriptures. Never. And nobody should either. And people that ask you to do that, you know, you got to question them. You can never have too many scriptures. So, ah, okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the show there. Sorry for the little bit of drama that happens sometimes. Basically, we have to address things. So I apologize. Apologize for the mistakes that I've made in the past that have caused even any of this to happen. Because none of this would have happened had I not made a mistake, right? So I apologize for that and I repent for that. But understand, once you see the proof, that did not happen, what they're saying. And if it did happen, there I would be in cuffs right now. So don't give in to the devil's attempts to accuse the brethren. I love each and every one of you guys. Have a great day. Take care and be safe.